We've got an update on the Magic Key situation, and there's a new development in the Reedy Creek story. We're going to talk about both of these stories next on Fresh Bait. Hi guys, David here with Fresh Bank. I got a couple of news stories that I wanted to share with you today, and we're going to start with the most recent updates for what's going on with the Magic Key situation. As of this recording, it is August 26th, one month before the first major wave of Magic Key expirations or renewals. We're not sure which. In less than 30 days, those guests who bought their Magic Keys on August 25th, the first day they became available, those guests will no longer be pass holders if Disney does not allow for renewals in that time. And so far, they have not. No renewal windows have opened up. No word from Disney. The renew button is there and enabled, but it still doesn't take you anywhere. So naturally, I'm asked often, David, what's the latest on the Magic Key situation? What is the news? Typically, my answer is, there isn't any. Well, nothing from Disney anyway. But I do hear whispers from interested third and fourth parties. And the general sense that I get from my conversations with other people is that Disney still doesn't know what they're doing, what they want to do with Magic Keys. They're listening to guests. They're doing surveys. They're, they're diving into analytics. And they're no closer to figuring out what the new Magic Key Pass is going to look like. Either they can't decide or they can't sell them at all. And by that, I mean the Magic Key lawsuit. It's still ongoing. There's been no news, not since uh, the judge allowed the case to proceed back in May. And my guess is that the part of their process is maybe perhaps trying to figure out some sort of settlement with that Magic Key lawsuit. Not a cash settlement, but some sort of uh, compromise or agreement. It has always been my supposition that whoever is bringing this suit isn't looking for a reward. They're looking for Disney to change the way they do business, to change the way that they issue and work with Magic Keys. So the settlement might be uh, where they agree to issue a Magic Key, one that doesn't have any reservations, or at least they're trying to figure out one where they're not you know, further exposed to more lawsuits. I'm pretty certain they did not go very well, for, for Disney anyway. I'd bet my house that the overall response to the surveys, which are still going out, by the way, are that people want APs. They don't want the reservation system, they don't want to pay for parking, and they don't really care about AP perks like buttons and mini posters. Though it does seem like we show up and queue up for those things when they do issue them, myself included. I did a whole video on the last AP Days thing. Uh, but I will tell you this, those types of things are not, they don't enter at all. They don't factor at all into my purchasing decision, whether or not I buy a Magic Key. You could take or leave that stuff, absolutely. Now, the analytics, that's where things get a little bit interesting. Because even though Disney hasn't sold a Dream Key since October, they haven't sold a Believe Key since November. The parks, they seem to be doing okay. It's not super busy, but it's busy enough where the casual observer is probably saying, golly, you know, it sure is busy here at Disneyland. And yes, I do say golly. <laughs> so I, that's something that I would say. Now, I, I've been going to the park at least once a week for literally the past 10 years. So I feel like I'm a pretty good judge of what's busy and what isn't. It is not as busy as it could be. But as I've often discussed, that could, that could be for two reasons. One, it could be that people are just deciding not to go. It's not as busy as it could be because folks are choosing not to go. Or it could be that Disney is still throttling attendance. They're still throttling, keeping things low in terms of capacity. Well, lower anyway. Meanwhile, Disney does not appear to have made any significant changes to the reservation calendar, which is interesting. I've seen a few guests suggest that something is up with reservations, where it appears that they are being blocked from making reservations before their passes expire. For example, well, my pass expires on August 25th, so I should be able to make reservations until then. However, the Dream Keys calendar is blocked out for the second half of August. And then, as expected, September is simply unavailable. But those dates are not blocked out, they're sold out. The Enchant Key is eligible to make reservations beginning August 15th, and they swooped in and book those two weeks in August super fast. And that's what I mean about Disney not making any sort of adjustments. It has been this way for a couple of weeks now, maybe a month, where those last two weeks in August have been booked. But Disney has made no effort to make more dates available, which is, has been their pattern. We have seen throughout the, 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 uh, the Magic Key situation and the reservation calendar, we have seen cases where you know, certain sections of the calendar are blocked out, then Disney comes in and they release more reservations and people come and take those. I have yet to see any sort of restocking of reservations for that last two weeks in August, for weeks now, for, for almost a month, I would think. 
They're gone, and they appear so far to, to stay gone. Interestingly, look at the September calendar now. This is where we see the effects of the Enchant key and all of the keys sharing the same bucket. Sure, they swooped in and booked August, but September and October are mostly wide open. What gives? What gives is that the majority of Dream and Belief key holders can't make reservations in September and October. Some can, but I suspect that the overwhelming majority of, of Dream and Belief key holders bought their passes, bought their keys in August when they first became available. That I mean, the, the park was full of people trying to buy keys on August 25th, myself included, and then shortly thereafter, I'm sure a bunch of other people purchased them. Therefore, the majority of those keys will expire by the end of the month or in the, probably the first half of September, I'm sure. And that's when the calendar is mostly wide open. If there are no Magic Key renewals by September, I'm going to be very interested to see what the park looks like on that September 3rd and 4th weekend. There's going to be significantly fewer uh, Dream and Belief Key holders there on that weekend, and there are no Enchanter Imagine. They're blocked out for that weekend. So this that weekend is going to be the first weekend, assuming there's no renewals, where it's going to be the park is going to be comprised almost exclusively of single and multi-day ticket holders. What is the park going to look like? Is it going to look like it did pre-COVID back in, I don't know, like uh, March, April, or May when the parks were very empty and it was just single and multi-day ticket holders? But that's when Disney was still, you know, they were new at, at, at having the park open. They were still under severe, you know, uh, attendance restrictions, et cetera. So they, it was designed that way. Is that the way they're going to want it <laughs> come, <laughs> come September heading into the holiday season? Is that going to be something that they want? We'll see. Then by the end of October... There's not going to be any Dream Keys because they will have they, they stopped selling them in October. And the same for Believe Key by the end of November. And I cannot believe that I'm actually having this conversation with you right now. I cannot believe we still don't know the answer to this question. So my question to you is, do you think that Disney wants annual pass holders, Magic Keys? Personally, I don't think that they want them, but I think they know that they need them. Keep in mind, there's a possible recession coming. Soon. Could happen, maybe not, but if it does, certainly Disney's going to want to lean on, be leaning on annual pass holders, just like in 2007. That's when we had our last recession. Disney leaned heavily on annual pass holders back then, and really, they haven't looked back since. The annual pass holder program has gained momentum since then, since the last recession. Are they prepared to weather another recession without the safety net of annual pass holders? It's a good question. It's an interesting question. I think not. They know that they need them, but they're trying to figure out a way for them to exist with the reservation system and also while trying to exploit them for further benefit financially, which is very tricky. APs and reservations don't mix. That's, that's been very evident uh, from the beginning, and it's, it's why we're at this point where we are today, because APs and reservations don't mix. It's one thing to have a pass with reservations, kind of like the Flex Pass, which, by the way, was just on the weekends. Weekdays were wide open. But it's another thing for all of your passes to have reservations. But having said that, we also know that Disney's, I don't know, adverse to uh, sticker shock on their prices. They don't mind selling, you know, those weird drink things for $5,000 on a Disney cruise ship. They don't mind selling $100,000 vacation packages to the rich. They don't mind that. But what I think they do mind is trying to sell general tickets with, with huge prices on them. They don't like the appearance of being unaffordable. I mean, some people say that they already are, but then to go ahead and tack on another $500 or $1,000 to an annual pass price, they're adverse to that, I think. It's why we got a $1,500 Dream Key last August when literally everyone was expecting it to cost more. We were all just standing by waiting for it to cost $2,000 or something like that. And I was personally shocked that they offered, even though it, it was less than the past before in terms of what you could do with it because of the reservation system, uh, I was shocked that it was sold, but they, they kept the price at $1,500. I remember saying that. So stay tuned to Fresh Bake, obviously, because we're going to be following this story, and we'll let you guys know as soon as something new develops on the Magic Key front. In the meantime, I'm going to talk to you about another story that does have a new development, something that we asked you to stay tuned for before in the past. That story is Reedy Creek. For most who watch this channel regularly, you are already very familiar with what Reedy Creek is, but let me give you a quick primer for those of you who are kind of new to this story. Walt Disney World in Florida exists on what used to be uninhabitable swampland. It was bad enough that the state of Florida allowed Disney to do 
whatever they wanted, whatever they needed to, to make building a theme park possible, literally and legally. The Reedy Creek Improvement District gives Disney the ability to self-govern. Disney is the government. They are responsible for everything, including basic city services, you know, roads, police, fire department, everything. And it gives them the ability to build whatever they want, whenever they want, without having to go through any sort of bureaucratic red tape. Now, they'll make a joke. They made a joke about this could even include something like a nuclear power plant. And they often reference that, the people who are detracting from this, as if that's a thing. Disney was never going to build a nuclear... All, all the agreements said, all Reedy Creek said is that they are able to do that kind of thing. They can, they can do it. But nobody... It's not written in Reedy Creek, Disney can build a nuclear power plant. They don't want to build a nuclear power plant. They, they, Disney's building solar, not nuclear. Anyway, I, I just wanted to put that out there because people keep talking about it like it was a real thing, and it's just not. Anyway... It's a great deal for Disney because of the aforementioned reasons. They are free to do, to build Disney World how they want without having to go through bureaucratic red tape. But then Disney got into a, a bit of a kerfuffle with the state of Florida over the Parental Rights Education Act. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis decided, you know what? We're going to end the Reedy Creek Improvement District. And they were not shy about saying it's because Disney got involved in their state politics. They said, Disney, if you want to get involved in our state politics, we're going to take away one of your best advantages. And therefore, Disney would no longer be self-governing. They would no longer be free to build whatever they want, whenever they want. They would have to go through the same bureaucratic red tape as any other theme park would, thus losing a very handy and valuable competitive advantage. Now, since then, things have been mostly silent because it was the, the law was written and we were just waiting until 2023 for it to become law. Now, most experts agreed that between then, or between now and then, there would be some sort of agreement, some sort of compromise. They wouldn't get all the way to a just complete disillusion of Reedy Creek, mostly because the state of Florida needs Disney. They really do. They're, they're a huge part of, of the Florida state economy. They need Disney to be successful. They also don't want to give the appearance of being unfriendly to uh, business. And by the way, that's the way it does look. It looks like that their position against Disney is, is adversarial, and it does not look good for bringing in new business to the state of Florida. And so it appears, now that we're talking about this, that uh, Florida state officials re made recent comments that suggest that there is, in fact, going to be some sort of compromise down the line before uh, to, you know, the 2023 activation of the new law. Comments from a, from a Florida official suggest that the Reedy Creek District will be reestablished. Now, this means that Reedy Creek, as we know it today, will, will, will end. It, they, that will dissolve, but they are going to create a new district, one that is run by the state of Florida, not by the local government. And that new district would take over all of the old responsibilities that were taken on by the original Reedy Creek Improvement District. And that does appear to include the tax burden that would have been taken on by that local government. It is now going to be taken on by the state of Florida. I mention that because one of the arguments made against the state doing this kind of thing is that there is roughly a billion dollars in bond debt that has been taken on by the Reedy Creek District. And that tax burden, that bond would be repaid by Reedy Creek, i.e. repaid by the Disney company and the other companies that comprise the Reedy Creek District, but it's pri primarily, predominantly Disney. Disney would be repaying that $1 billion in bond debt. If they dissolve Reedy Creek, that bond debt would be taken on by whatever entity takes over those responsibilities. This is a civic bond debt, not a private bond debt, because <laughs> DeSantis had made the point of saying Disney's going to pay that bond debt. I would guess that it has been made apparent to him, that it's been explained to him, that they can't do that because this is a civic debt. It's not, this is not a debt that the Disney company took on. It's a debt that the Reedy Creek Improvement District took on, the bond debt, and therefore would need to be repaid by whomever takes over that entity. Per Ben Watkins, the state of Florida's head of finance, with Florida taking over the Reedy Creek District, it will also take over the bond debt. Now, whether or not this is a good thing for the Disney company with respect to their ability to operate as they did before, we don't know the answer to that question yet. But I do think with Florida confirming that they are going to take on that debt, it does remove a potential weapon that the Disney company had in trying to squash this plan. It means that this thing is going to go forward. And though a new district will be created to take its place, and though I think it'll probably look similar 
to the one that exists already, it will definitely not be as favorable to the Disney company as, as the current district is. It means in the bigger picture that Disney is going to lose that significant competitive advantage it has over the other theme parks in the state of Florida. They may still have one. They may still have an edge. They may still have a, an advantage. But the gap between Disney and, let's say, Universal Studios Orlando, that gap is closed quite a bit. Meanwhile, <laughs> Universal Orlando is moving full steam ahead with Epic Universe. They appear to be unbothered by the bureaucratic uh, nonsense that they have to go through that Disney does not. They're getting things done. So perhaps, you know, maybe Disney could look at what Universal is doing and maybe learn a few things so they can be prepared for how to operate under this new political environment that they find they will find themselves in in 2023. And on that note, let's hear from you, Fresh Bake. Do you think that Disney should feel threatened by Epic Universe? Do you think that there should be some sort of response by Disney? That always seems to be the case. Every time lately uh, that one theme park has done something, Disney has tried to respond. I, well, I shouldn't say every time. The bigger stories. Universal comes up with uh, Harry Potter Town. Disney creates Galaxy's Edge. Who won that one, I wonder? I, I mean, I guess if you're going to be fair... The winner of that is Universal because that has really given them a lot of uh, cachet in the theme park industry. It's given them something to grow on. It's given them confidence to move forward in that kind of environment. And I think it's given them a lot of confidence in what they're going to do with Epic Universe. I wonder what Disney's response is going to be to Epic Universe. This is a completely tangential conversation, but there you are. Let us know, Fresh Baked, in the comments below. And until next time, follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney, that's fresh with no E, and on, I just said TikTok, <laughs> that's Twitter, TikTok is Fresh Baked Disney, I'm losing my mind, I'm going to keep going because I don't even know where I am at this point, thanks for watching everybody, we love you, be safe out there, be kind to one another, and Fresh Baked!